It's a melody, it's a sound, it's a, and that's, like, that's part of my homework, is like, what is, what does that sound mean? What is, what is, okay, this is a chord change, this is this, this is a melody, like, okay, but what does that mean? What is it, where am I? Where, if I close my eyes, where am I? If there's a person or if there's an aspect of life in this song, what is it? So it's finding the mood of it and saying, well, what, what fits in that? And then you, you put down the, the closest meaning you can get to it, and maybe it starts one place and it ends up in another, or maybe you might write it 10 times, you know, before you realize you should have just went with the first one. <laughs> I think the, the less you think about it, the better. It's like you just grab something and go and... You can try to write a song and you can write it, and that's like, it's like bricklaying. And I think a lot of those middle records, I was like bricklaying. It was like homework, and you did this, and every once in a while you'd reach for the dictionary, you know. It's good, it's a good job, hard working, you know, it felt <laughs> like you were working. But if you're more like a conduit, and if you somehow, if you feel something tapping into you, and, and mind you, I'm not tapping into it, Some, sometimes things just tap into you, then you just, you just let it go. This is Roger's mic. A lot of photos I got. This is the night I, uh, this is Joe, me and Joe Strummer. And that's the night I met Jack Irons, which is the, the night that kind of ended up here because without meeting Jack, I would have met, uh, never met Jack and Stone and all that kind of stuff. So you met so. Jack at a, at a Strummer show? He was, he was playing, Joe Strummer had a record called Earthquake Weather and Jack was the drummer. And he was the only one who showed up for sound check. I was working crew at a little club called the Bacchanal in San Diego. I know it well. Right next to Tools R Us and the a &P or something. That was at the end of the night, and that's, that's me and Joe. It's a pivotal night right there. That, it all kind of comes down to that night. It's terrifying. stuff, you know, it's all the set lists and that's what it looks like these days, you know. Notebooks, toothbrushes, certain pens that you trust. Can I see a set list? Uh, let's see what we got. Oh, and this is after they get printed up nice. See, I write them like this. Oh, great. And then they get... Wow. Redone. So this is this is after a band meeting where you discuss this, or is this you doing your own edit? Yeah, we all kind of it, it's uh, it gets democratic at some point, but um, I don't know if everyone agreed. But uh, yeah, kind of kind of write it up and let everybody make sure. Uh, you know, it's a long conversation. <laughs> if you want, we'll have it later. <laughs> yeah. Or 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 a tiny bit now. Yeah. Well, sound check. You 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 try to do all the things that might be strange. So these are all. This would be all very strange songs to play. And then this, you have to kind of get to where it's normal. And then you figure it out, and it all becomes the thing. So based on sound check, you might drop in an extra song or two that sounded good that you tried out. Right, that yeah. Way. Well, yeah, we'll try a few, and then sometimes you, you, you can't put all of them in. And sometimes you can't put all of them in because they're too strange for people to grasp, you know. 
just because we play bigger places, I had a talk with somebody about this recently, Ian McCoy from Fugazi. I think the smaller places, uh, the smaller the place you play, you can get away with a lot more. That's one thing about Neil, I don't think Neil gives a shit. <laughs> Either way. And I hate that I do. Because I think it uh, keeps us from progressing sometimes. But I think that with that amount of people, you got to think there's a lot of people, and they're on the lawn, and they're on, you know, whatever. You kind of, kind of keep them interested. You know? But you, you've also said to an audience, "Do you want black, red, and yellow tonight, or do you want the stuff you know?" Like you've, yeah. You've actually presented the audience with the choice. Yeah, and I could not hear the answer in any kind of comprehensible way. It was like, so, so why play hit? Do what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sandy, Sandy, I love you every day. Sandy, we got this in a sh we got this in uh, Kentucky, Louisville. A day off, we went to a, um, a junk shop, antique store, or whatever. This thing had uh, uh, literally an inch of dust on it. We bought this, a few records, went back, uh, Eric Johnson, Keith Blues, Mar and I, and we had just the best hotel room party. Like throwing footballs onto the beds. We were good, it was a small room. All right. Still lives to this day, and I also bought a. Um, you know, I also bought a, uh, a fake leg, like a prosthetic leg. At the junk uh, shop. Yeah, at some point you're gonna be sticking my stories because I got time. No, no, no. But we bought a, a a fake, like a, you know, prosthetic leg, and it still had like an earth shoe and a stocking and a sock on it. And that ended up we created a um, a fake replica of myself at the time. Oh, I also bought a couple of football helmets, Bengals helmets at that place. So we, we did this thing where we, we made a, a fake body with, we had some Doc Martens on. <laughs> that we even drew the tattoo on the, I got a tattoo. We put it on the uh, prosthetic leg and did the whole thing. It was, uh, it was at the Fox Theater in Atlanta a couple of days later. Oh man. And then we, um, I went up to the rafters and the, and the light rig and I was singing Porch and whatever, and we did it, and it was up there, the body was up there with the matching helmet, the army jacket, everything that I'd worn. And then we were doing it, and then we we're playing, and the audience is there, a small place, and then we, and then I dumped the body off the thing. It was kind of behind some stuff, and I dumped the body off the thing, thinking that there would be a huge evil communal reaction of like, no. you know, yeah, he slipped, you know, fell and the whole thing. And I, and I was watching, I could see the, the whole audience. So I did it and I was waiting for the reaction. And I swear to God to this day, there was like one guy in the second row who was like. <laughs> and no one else ever was. <laughs> like, no one saw it. Like, it was no. so funny, I, like one guy saw it. <laughs> it wasn't the reaction I was expecting. The alternative port. I mean, what if it there really was. would have happened? Well, you know. you know, now you know what it would have been like.